another episode of Business with Passion. Each show features guests who have transformed their long-term passion into a successful business. I'm your host, Jay Hamilton Roth. My marketing strategy business grew from my love of talking with passionate business owners. In this series, I share their passion with you. So if you're looking for inspiration to enhance your business passion, keep watching. My long-term passion and my current passion is dancing and social dancing with two people in an intimate embrace and enjoying live music and experiencing the joy of twirling and spinning on a dance floor, two people as one. My memories of dance, I think, came from the womb. I am from Chicago, and I'm a Polish background, and I heard polka music as a very young infant. And polka music is bouncing, rhythm, and tempo, and I was surrounded by it most of my young life. I was then courted into the dance school near my home, and my mom was great enough to put me in jazz, tap, ballet, and acrobats, and I started to dance at a very, very young age. My family wasn't quite sure that being a dancer was the best place to go. When are you going to get a job? How are you going to support yourself? So I learned how to type. To my dismay, I was typing to make a living. But it was a perfect balance because at night I would dance and by day I would sit and type and earn my living. So then I started getting creative and those were in the Herb Kane days. I became the tapping typist because I needed to have an identity that would get me up in the morning to go to the job. And then at night and on the weekends I would be honing my craft and participating in performances and also to have the day job to support the pretty dresses, sparkly shoes, and the lessons. So it was a metamorphosis that happened with the tapping typist, and still to this day, people in my, from my family, what kind of job do you have? And I've been actually able to support myself for um, many, many years with my dance. I came at a very young age to the Bay Area, and I was able to then find that the creative force that we are known for here that was just nurturing my um, do be who you want to be and do what you want to do and therefore I started to be able to explore my dancing passion and became a San Francisco street artist. It nurtured Union Square, the Fisherman's Wharf, and I was able to find a group of women who were kind of pursuing that genre, and I actually made my living dancing at Fisherman's Wharf, dancing in Union Square with a group called Rosie Radiator and the Push Rods. We were on our way up and out, being a very unique talent that were perched on the corner five days a week, passing the hat, so when my family back home would say, do you have a job? And my response was, yes, I do, and I'm doing very well. I'm dancing on the streets. They didn't quite get that, but it was one of the most joyous and most memorable parts of my um, journey to where I am today. Tap dancing on the streets of San Francisco was a very unique experience, and being with um, all of the other performers, Shields and Yarnell, the human jukebox, um, I believe Robin Williams had a corner at some point. We were all honing our crafts by presenting it to the tourists that were there that were completely entertained and generous with their offerings. As we went along from the streets, we also, with the group that I was with, we tap danced through the streets of San Francisco and tap danced our way into the Guinness Book of World Records. There was no category for long distance tap dancing at the time but the gals that I was working with very good publicity eye and we did it on Labor Day a slow news day and so Labor Day we danced through the streets from point A to point B our first year and got ourselves into our own category of the Guinness Book of World Records so for years afterwards we continually broke our record and we were able to establish that that feat 
tap dancing feet through the San Francisco streets. And then as we evolved, we got to stage, we were doing television, we got to perform in front of 10,000 people as the opening act for Sha Na Na. And we were able to then take us on the road working with Dick Clark and his rock and roll show. So I was really getting the taste of what it was like to be on the road, to be working in, in a, a, a really great production, especially with Dick Clark, it was fabulous. And um, also learning the craft of how to uh, behave and perform at the same time. After having dance be a part of my young life, um, looking back on it now, it's almost like the miracle that happened. And it wasn't a positive experience. The man that I first fell in love with kind of took a spin, you might say. And I was then in this relationship that wasn't a very healthy relationship. And the culmination of that was realizing that I was a victim of domestic violence to the point where it got really bad. And I found no way out because I was in San Francisco away from my family and the creativity was being stifled and I was being stifled as a person. And I couldn't believe that the man that I fell in love with would do such a thing. And he didn't dance either. But anyway, that's another story. But um, in retrospect, I had many, many injuries that were very, very life-threatening, that I didn't think that I would survive. Neither did the doctors. And I did. And the most wonderful blessing was, is this was not a very talked about subject at that time. And I didn't know where to go, what to do, and there was a social worker who told me that there was a battered women's shelter opening up in San Francisco, the first in the United States of America. She gave me the phone number, I called, and I was rescued from the hospital bed to the shelter. And I was then able to find my way. I was in very, very bad shape, physically, emotionally, devastated. And as I began to heal with the support of this first shelter that happened to be in San Francisco, happened to be near where I was, and gave me a route to heal. I was feeling healthier through this experience and the support of all these wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, one day I was walking down the street and I saw a picture in a storefront window of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Now how beautiful is a couple, elegant, romantic, and I just left this, this terrible trauma of the person that I was in love with. I saw that and I waltzed into that storefront and the gentleman taught ballroom dancing and it literally saved my life. From that point on, I began being trained by this wonderful man, may he rest in peace, Bob Dean Dance Studio. And he was my mentor. And then disco was around that time and the joyfulness of disco dancing, partner dancing, two people, literally took me out of my head and got me into the movie that I needed to heal with and to survive and to function as an independent artist, as a dancer, to be able to express myself through my pain, through the joy of movement. Because I'm gonna say, when you dance and you hear music, you do not hear or feel anything that is negative. So it, what happens here is it just kind of starts to flow and float. And with disco being big, I found dance partners and a wonderful supportive community 
And that is where it all the journey began from the Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers picture in the storefront, coming from the battered women's shelter, and then leaving the shelter a stronger person, and then having a focus to take me and survive as a real person. From the live music venues that I discovered with a wonderful group of young people, we started to create this whole little universe, you might say. And every Friday night we would meet. We were all in our day jobs and we'd all dress up at night and come out and be somebody else for the evening. And it was getting more difficult to leave that environment because I wanted to be that somebody else. So there I became, Cynthia Glinka. I started to dress up more into in a vintage style at that time, um, finding more venues to, and more folks to share this experience with. And this whole little world started to appear. And I was in the bathroom of this club one, one evening, and these two gals came in and they says, you folks are having so much fun, are you a club? And my friend and I looked at each other and said, sure, we're a club, do you wanna join our club? And that was the first business venture I ever took called the Ritz Continental Club. I took the Ritz, the Continental, putting on the Ritz, put those two together, and we started a club. Had a little newsletter telling people where to go dancing. I started to produce events all through the area, tea dances and a Friday night socials. So the business mind and the business of dance kind of all merged together from that little exchange of, you folks are looking like you're having so much fun. Teaching people how to dance is an art and what I discovered is to be able to work with people who never thought it would be possible so I started devising if you can walk you can dance and I kind of let go of all the fancy footwork all the patterns that I was taught all the variations all the technique out the door folks and I just went for it with regards to getting our men to stand up and dance with their women or leaders and followers there is a leader there is a follower and there's a combination of two people communicating, non-verbally dancing and expressing their own excitement for what they might be hearing in their ears. And the way I started to market this was I would, I had a business called Roll Up the Carpet. I couldn't afford a dance studio. I was all by myself. I was an independent person. So I started publicizing Roll Up the Carpet with Cynthia Glinka. I would go to people's homes with my boom box and we would roll up the carpet and I would teach them how to dance. So the business started to move along and roll up the carpet, started to get established in the Bay Area, outlying suburbs, and I was driving and dancing when I got there because I didn't have the overhead that I needed for to open up a storefront myself. A roll up the carpet was great, but I had to become real, grown up. And then we started to kind of, what's gonna happen here? How? I'm on the dance floor, whatever dance floor it might be, in your apartment, in your ballroom, in the downtown ballrooms, on the streets. I didn't do that anymore, but anyway, it became Cynthia Glinka on the dance floor. I teach folks now in the wedding field, and I've been, it's a wonderful joy to be able to teach people in love. I mean, what's the best client is that? My little dance students come in two by two, and they go out dancing as one and their goal is to dance their first dance. They spent all this money on their wedding and people are forgetting that they're gonna be watching two people out there doing the old bear hug from the past. And I took all my movie experience because I feel sometimes I, like I live in a movie and I see movies and the elegance and the romance. I was able to apply that so now I can teach a couple, whether they're getting married or not, how to dance in one session. Dancing brings you into the present moment. There's no past, there's no future. It's all about what's happening right now. Someone right in front of you, holding on, it's real. It's all happening at that very moment. And that's pretty, pretty uh, exciting stuff. To, to let go of your troubles, forget about what you need to do later, right here, right now. In the mid-90s, I was contacted through an agent in town and was offered a position and an opportunity to work on an opening scene for a major motion picture. Well, I got very, very excited 
and an award winning, Academy Award winning director at the helm who happened to be from Chicago when I went for the interview. It kind of connected the Chicago background and I got the job that afternoon. And as it evolved, I was working with the major principals who had to dance, act, dialogue, the script, and have 500 dancers in the background. And this has been my favorite venue. I had the choice venue when they told me what the location was, one of my favorite ballrooms in all of San Francisco. And um, I was brought on board and I was able to bring in all of my dancing friends for background, along with all of the studio background dancers. And this was at the Garden Court at the Sheridan Palace Hotel, the most beautiful ballroom and my favorite. And what happened there was I was given the principals, who again had to do all of these things while they were dancing. And David Caruso, he was NYPD Blue at the day, at the time, and his first feature film. Chaz Palminteri, Linda Fiorentino, and a wonderful cast of characters. And the film was Jade. In the mid-90s, we were filming here a lot. And I was getting these calls, and I had the wonderful pleasure of working with actor Keanu Reeves for a scene in a film called Sweet November. And his partner was Charlize Theron, who, by the way, is a dancer herself, professional dancer, fabulous sense. And the roles were reversed for the scene that I was given where Mr. Reeves had to teach Charlize Theron how to dance. So the roles were reversed. And again, we had so much fun. Sarah. And we kept dancing and dancing to get a little piece of the film, which now I really know how this all works. Because all that work kind of went down to one little, one little segment. In 2005, I received a phone call that I was being considered to choreograph a film, an independent film this time. Two major uh, theater production companies and then the independent world came in. And um, that afternoon, I went and met at a coffee shop. I kind of waltzed in to have the production meeting, the first meet and greet. And I was going for my cup of coffee and the folks at the table, I heard, this could be in my mind, but I do believe it's a reality, she's the one. I came back to the table, I was given the script, and a few months later, funding was found, and I was choreographing a film called Swing. And I was able to have auditions, for all of the finest dancers in the Bay Area. Um, I was able to work with major principals again, Jacqueline Bissett, Barry Bostwick, were the two principal dancers there, but I worked to work with Jonathan Winters in his first feature after 20 years retirement out of films, and the late Nell Carter was in that film. I worked with the, all the orchestrations of the music and the key scenes that pulled this film together. A phone call that came one morning was an invitation to come to a history class that a friend of mine was teaching and they happened to be learning about the history of the 1920s. So in order to make it interesting for the students, I was asked to come in and teach the dances of the 1920s so the kids kind of get up away from the history book and just learn the 20s experience, got to dress up. We had a great event that was culminated in this history class and um, we went from there, another phone call came, and we'd like for you to teach a cotillion program. And I went, cotillion? Well, I was very reluctant. Sixth graders, I began that 11 years ago. That journey now escalated to a new spin on cotillion because my movie mind is always thinking beyond the boring cotillion experience and I am proud to say that we are now manners in motion and it's like being in a movie I'm catering it to sixth graders fifth and seventh not excluded but young people because I realized that if these young people don't realize the partner dancing they're gonna be doing what every parent doesn't want them to do and I'll say it right now, it's called freaking my child is freak dancing and I'm going freak dancing I'm, Oh, is this what they're learning on MTV? I mean, so it got very confusing. 
I am now trying to expand that to have it be a fun program for children. They are dressed up. They are learning manners. There's many components to this program. We're going regionally because all of my dancing friends live in outlying areas and they've been following me, supporting me, and learning my program. They're very qualified folks. So we're now going to take it regionally to other locations with my goal at the first of the year to launch it nationally. I get emails from people in Iowa, how can I teach this program? I get calls from people saying, I saw your stuff on the, the internet. How can I do this? So I'm setting up a program to train the trainers to be able to bring that program. After all these years, I've compiled a syllabus and the business plan, and I'm hoping to be able to invite all these wonderful folks who want to take it to their community in, in little towns or big towns and to come to San Francisco for a weekend, and then I can share with them the routine of the Manners in Motion syllabus. Whenever I teach children, I always want to get them comfortable with music, the rhythms, and beats. And I had an idea what was going to happen. The idea was disco and we evolved the choreography adding on a different portion every week for the finale. If money was no object, it would be a traveling dance hall. And I also have this vision of a Broadway show where instead of people are sitting in their chairs watching a show, I see this vision of people watching a short show, but then getting involved with the dancing on the dance floor. It could be done all across the country, actually. Dancing is almost an obsession. I've been doing it my entire life. I'm still doing it today. I see myself continuing it. And it brings health, makes me healthy, makes me pop out of bed. It brings me in an intimate embrace with a fellow human being. It's not like tennis. Pink a pink. Bowling. Hey, swimming. There you are. Sport. Dancing in an intimate embrace. And if that doesn't do it to you, I don't know what will. Dancing saved my life when I was young. And it, every time I think of that, it just is a joyful place to be. Music, people, isolation is rampant. We need to go back. We were all rock and roll babies. I was a rock and roll baby when I knew I could hold on to somebody and really they wouldn't disappear in a strobe light. 
That is where I enjoyed the pure moment of interaction. People need to come back together. We've been blown out into the computer world. This is not an internet experience. This is a real life connected and intimate, safe experience. Thanks for watching this episode of Business with Passion. If you'd like more information about Cynthia Glinka, other shows, or perhaps to be a guest on a future show, go online to tv.manygoodideas.com.